Hello friends. I wanted to make a quick video. Um, my son is moving into math one for good and beautiful. And right now our budget's a little tight, so I didn't want to, um, to purchase it and pay shipping and all of that. So I just decided to print it. Um, you can see it came out quite nice. Um, the problem is when you print these, um, free PDFs that the good and beautiful generously gives away, uh, you also end up needing a math box, um, which are about $30 and, uh, plus shipping. So again, I was trying to figure out how to, um, save a little bit of money and make something a little bit more, uh, budget friendly. So I wanted to show, I did look on YouTube to see if anybody had any good ideas on how to make these. Um, aside from the bit of advice that's offered by the good and beautiful themselves. Um, I didn't see a whole lot of content really offering some practical advice on how to make these. So I wanted to just really quickly go over how I made this box. Um, I'm pretty pleased with how it came out. Uh, you can see I've got two sides on it. Um, so I'm going to show you what is in it and then I'll just talk a little bit about how exactly I made it. So first of all, um, this box right here was actually a, um, I believe it was rose art, uh, kit. So like had, uh, markers and crayons and all that stuff. Um, and the kids very quickly lost all of that. And we ended up with this nice little wooden box, um, hanging around. Uh, it used to look like this. So that was my daughter's one. This one belongs to my son and... Um, they are just, yeah, they have these cute little designs on them, a little wooden box. So this is what I used. You could use anything you want. Um, you just basically need something to contain it all. And this is what I had on hand. And so I, uh, decoupaged some colored paper on top of it. I printed off, um, the, that's this page right here from the book. And then I just cut out, um, a circle with the math one logo on it. And then for the back, I went on um, Teachers Pay Teachers, and there was this lovely set of uh, watercolor uh, math charts. And so I just printed off this one, but I mean, you could print off whatever you wanted. I just thought it would be nice for my seven-year-old to have a little bit of extra um, math references around. So on to what's inside the box. So first thing you'll notice is um, it's upside down from this perspective, but I did put um, the skip counting chart that's available on the Good and Beautiful um, website for free on their blog. Um, I printed off one of those and put it inside the box. And right here we have um, the official one comes with a whiteboard. So what I used was um, I had a, a pad around that was like uh, all these placemats and it had like a glossy cover on the back. It was like a tear off pad of placemats with games and puzzles and things. So I just used that. It's a nice thick piece of cardboard and it's super glossy, but again, you could use whatever you have around. Um, you know, the dollar store has really good uh, little whiteboards that it really was perfect for this. But I used what I had. I cut that in half um, with an X-Acto knife. And then on the back of it, I decoupaged the hundreds chart that is uh, early on in the book. It's within the first few pages. So when I was printing, um, I had a little bit of difficulty. It's always a little bit of a learning curve printing those off. Um, so I always make sure I print off like some useful pages while I'm experimenting with how to get the right print. Um, in this case, I printed a couple pages of the hundreds chart because I knew these would come in handy for something. And sure enough, um, to cover up this nonsense that was on the back of it, I just decoupaged a hundreds chart on there. So now he's got a hundreds chart along with his um, whiteboard. So next thing, I just threw a um, dry erase marker in there. Uh, I got these little plastic containers from Ikea. I just had some hanging around, but you know, you could use whatever you want, a uh, plastic bag or uh, any old thing that will contain coins. So those are just coins. Um, right here, I've got these two wooden cubes that I turned into the dice. Um, I would burn them. I would probably not do it again. That way I would probably just use um, maybe like a marker or even a paint marker. And 
they probably would have come out a little neater. Um, you can see I made a mistake with the wood burner there, but whatever they are, what they are. Um, I'm a little bit of a perfectionist, but in this case, I'm going to have to just get over it. Same thing with these, um, this dice right here. This is just a six sided regular dice. Um, you can find the template for this one, by the way, um, on good and beautiful. Um, this is just a regular six sided dice. So I pulled out, uh, a six-sided dice that I had and I basically copied it um, with a wood burner that looks like this. So I just use the tip. It's got like a rounded tip on it um, and just, you know, pss, pss, like that on the whole thing. Again, uh, if I had it to do over again, I probably would have like uh, sketched them out with a pencil because if you look, you'll see that they're not exactly um, even. But it is what it is. They work. And then I sanded it down with uh, just some fine grit sandpaper. Um, again, you can see it's not perfect. The wood burners are not always perfect. Um, I probably would do it again with a, with a Sharpie if I had it to do over again. Next, we have uh, this learning resources clock, which is really great. Um, it's only $4 on Amazon. And if you turn... You can see that the hour hand is turning by itself, so I really like that feature. Um, it's got a little spot for its stand, and again, it's only $4, and it's pretty durable. So I had that around, so I just pulled it out and put it in here. Um, the rest of it, let's see. So one of the things that is in this kit, I'm not going to pull them all out, but you can get the idea. So one of the things that's in this kit is supposed to be these little boats. Um, in the official kit, they come as like a little cutout shape. They recommended putting them on squares. I had these wooden coins around that uh, I thought would be pretty handy. Let me just grab one of the... Uh... So I had these wooden, wooden circles around. I had a whole big package of about 20 or 30 of them. So I just pulled those out and I used those. I actually did them double-sided and I modge-podged or decoupage them on with this, which worked really well. That was super easy. I just printed them out, stuck this on the sheet, traced around it, cut them out. Again, I did you know two sheets so they'd be double-sided, and those are all done. The next thing was the clocks, which I did the same way. So these are actually supposed to look like these little alarm clocks. Um, I did not have room on these little circles for the whole alarm clock, so I just cut out the face of the clock. I figured that's probably the most important part anyway. Um, theirs are double-sided. I wasn't exactly sure which clock to match up with which, so I just made them single-sided. And I think they'll work just fine, and if I need to, I can always um, print out another sheet and decoupage on other faces if it turns out that, you know, you gotta flip them like coins or something where you need two sides. But for now, those will work. So there's those. I just had this um, little pencil pouch that I got from it was five below. And then in here is my favorite part of this whole thing. Let me show you this real quick, actually. So on the other side, again, on Teachers Pay Teachers, I found this really handy um, coin chart. And so I decoupaged that to the inside of the box. And then this was the part that really puzzled me the most. I wasn't really sure how to do this. Um, but I think they came out really, really awesome. So you can see these are the Tanagrams. Um, and what I did for these, I had heard uh, suggestions to do it with foam. I didn't think that was a very good idea. The foam was going to be really flimsy. Um, printing them out and like gluing them to the foam, that sounded like a really bad idea to me. Um, I also didn't want to mess around with, I thought about maybe wood. I didn't want to be messing around with a jigsaw or anything. So what I did... I happened to have, um, I'm kind of a hoarder a tiny bit with, like, um, when I find good quality things that I could use for crafts. So, I had bought these hooks at the dollar store, and I had this package around that is just this nice, thick, kind of chipboard cardboard. And so, it was a nice big piece of it, and what I did was print it out, um, the template that they have on the Good and Beautiful website. Um, I actually printed it out twice. Uh, I printed it out on regular, um, uh, you know, like high quality, I think it was 28 pound printer paper. Um, and then I glue sticked them to this cardboard and then I used an X-Acto knife and I cut them all out. If I had it to do over again, 
I would not have used the glue stick. That was kind of a disaster. The um, paper was trying to peel up on me when I went to decoupage over the paper with the glue stick under it. So if I had to do over again, I would use this. I would not use glue stick. I would have decoupaged them to it, cut them out the same way I did. And then on the flip side of it, I had printed them out again and I decoupage them to the back side. The cool thing about this is um, if you mess up on it, you could just decoupage another layer over, which I did. Um, I ended up actually printing out uh, a whole second uh, set of those sheets and I printed them on cardstock this time. Um, this is what they look like. So again, if I had it to do over again, I would have just went with the cardstock the first time and saved myself um, a lot of extra work. The cardstock came out much better quality, the colors were much better on it, and the um, extra thickness actually did kind of make a difference. Um, I'm gonna see if I can get, like, so you can see. So this one, this one is one of the ones with cardstock, and you can see it's, you can see it's nice and thick. This one is just with paper and I don't know if you can see the difference, but it does make a difference. Um, yeah, let me grab it. So you can hear it like these things are nice and hard. They're like wood practically. They're really durable, really sturdy, and they look beautiful. I am very pleased with the way they came out. Uh, so that is it. That is my suggestions for how to make your good and beautiful math kit. Um, this is for level one. Could probably do something similar for level two or level one or for level K rather. Um, and yeah, let me know in the comments if you have any questions and I'll do my best to answer them. But yeah, just thick, heavy cardboard, really good way to make these tangrams. All right. Take care. Bye-bye. Hope this helps.